I feel marriages, I was married for 40 years and it's a partnership and that partnership involves three partners, Jesus, husband and wife. And as a spouse, as a, as a husband or a wife, you always have to put Jesus first, your spouse second, and your third. So you have to love your, your spouse more than you love yourself. And I think in today's society, I think that's one of the aspects that's missing in general from, from people. People are just too concerned about themselves and not about others. Well, I've always, I've always been uh, a Catholic. I was born and raised a Catholic. But uh, I think I've become closer to Jesus through my wife's illness. She had ovarian cancer. And, and even after her death, that's what really uh, not triggered me, but I guess I always had feelings about becoming a deacon, but that once, once she passed away, I, I, I felt really the calling to become a deacon, and that's, that's what I'm pursuing now. One day we came back from Sloan Kettering, and every time we would go down, she was getting uh, chemotherapy treatments, but every time we would go down, they would test her blood, and her cancer count numbers kept getting higher and higher and higher. And one day I came home with her, and she was laying upstairs in a, in a bedroom, and I just started yelling at God. I said, I go to church every day, I, I receive the Eucharist every day, I bring the Eucharist home to my wife, and I said, you're not even giving her a break. Just let her numbers come down a little bit. You're not listening to me. You, I'm wasting my time praying to you. So I'm not gonna pray to you anymore. And from the bedroom, her voice yells out, you better stop talking like that. Don't talk to God like that. And she told me, you better call your friend, Father Andre. And I did, and Father Andre basically walked me off the ledge, and he told me that uh, I should read Isaiah 55. And Isaiah 55 speaks of, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, my plans are, are greater than your plans. Basically, we don't understand God's plans, but we just have to put ourselves in his hands and, and live that way, knowing that he knows what's better for us. And from that day, the only prayer I said was I put myself in your hands and you know just give me the strength to, to make me do what I need to, to do. And my wife probably lived maybe about six months after that and then she passed away. But but my whole attitude by that point had changed for for the better, I believe. You know, even though I was going to church and praying I maybe I really wasn't listening to what God was saying or, or wasn't accepting what God wanted for me. So Why God gives us certain kinds of suffering? I don't know. I don't know the answer why, but I think we just have to accept it. And, and again, it's, it may be a, a test that he's giving us of our faith to, to put more faith into him, you know, believe in him more. And I go only for myself. During this period of time when my wife was so ill, it wasn't until that point where I said, Jesus, there's nothing I can do. I could worry, I could, there's nothing I can do. I just put everything in your hands. I place myself in your hands. And, and maybe that's the reason why that had to happen in order for me to be here. I mean, I don't know, again, like I said earlier, I don't know what God's plan for us is, but I think we just have to be open to whatever his plan, you have to be open to God and accept whatever comes our way. Knowing that he's with us, even through the suffering and all, he's, he's still with us. God is always with us, and, and that's what we have to keep in mind. And this is a letter that my wife had written. To all my dear family and friends, obviously someone will be giving my eulogy, but I figured I would get my final last two cents in. <clears throat> I want to leave you with a very special message. I don't want to bore you with the day I was born until my last day here on earth. But more importantly, I have always been a big fan of family, friends, love, and respect. If I have ever hurt any one of you in any way, believe me, it was not done intentionally, and I am very sorry, forgive me. So until we meet again, love one another each day and be there for each other. You are family and friends. Never let anger or hatred get in the way Respect each other at all costs. Life is too short. Forgive one another. Start right now. 
No one knows when the knock on the door will come for each of us, and we must be prepared and ready for eternal life. Take it from me. Always make the time to cherish and embrace life every day with Jesus the Lord, family, friends, forgiveness, love, and respect. In memory of me, I ask that at least once a day, you remember to reach out to someone and tell them you love them and be there for them. We are all just passing through this world for a little while. Some get to stay longer than others, but don't wait until it's too late. I leave you for now with all my love and respect and always and forever, your loving wife, mother, Nona, aunt, niece, cousin, best friend, and friend. Do I think that God chooses somebody for us? I, I think so. I think God puts certain people in your lives that, that he wants you to be, become a part of or to become part of your life for whatever, again, whatever his plan for us is in our lives. My wife had much stronger faith than I had at the time during, during her illness. I think this journey where I am today God is still showing me and teaching me, see? You can't be in charge, I'm the guy in charge. You gotta just listen to me. She's, we're still married. I look at it and she's part of my life every day. It's just a different dimension. She's with, she's in a different, she's with God, but she's with me also. She's with me in my heart and she'll always be with me in my heart. And, and I speak to her every day. I had listened to this uh, CD on this, it's the seven secrets of the Holy Eucharist. And one of the secrets was the communion of saints. And the individual that was giving the lecture said that if we believe that our loved ones are with God, they're part of the communion of saints. So every time we receive the Eucharist, in addition to receiving Jesus, we're receiving our loved ones because they're with Jesus as part of the communion of saints. So to me, that was very comforting. And every time I receive the Eucharist, I feel that I'm receiving my wife as well. So she's with me on a daily basis. And in a marriage, that's the key. You, ha you have to be willing to, to sacrifice, to, to give of yourself, totally of yourself, and, and put yourself after your spouse and, and naturally after God. That's, that's what I believe makes a successful marriage and makes a, success, a successful life as well. I think the only way that happens is again by, by having God in your life and in your marriage and, and praying to God and asking God for help. My great uncle was from Naples and he used to, and I remember as a little child going to his house and he had the Presebio set up in his house and I was always fascinated by it. I, I don't know, it's just something that fascinated me all, all my life. I think in any relationship, be it a, a, it's a relationship that you have with God. And I don't think God gets mad at you if you get angry with him. Okay, it's, it's similar to, to being married, all right? A relationship that you have a husband and wife it's not going to be all roses all the time you're going to have little conflicts or whatever but I think when you resolve those conflicts you become closer and I, and I think that's that's the same way with God I don't understand what he's got in mind for me and, and at times trying to understand that is where the anger comes about but once that anger passes and you realize this is God loves me no matter no matter what no matter what it is he loves me and he knows better than I know then then it's the relationship just keeps growing and, it, and it's a continual relationship it's not going to end until the day I die in Bethlehem. my philosophy is it's it's in God's hands I put it in God's hands and I, I don't have the right to to take my own life First of all, I, I don't know, if I, I couldn't do something like that anyway for my other loved ones around. And I understand her reasoning for doing it. She probably didn't want it 
want them to see her suffer anymore. But, and I'm not judging her. I mean, everybody has to do what, what they feel they have to do. I, I, don't, I don't believe it's right, but I'm not condemning her for it. Whatever she did, she did. I mean, she'll have to, you know, in, in the afterlife, God will speak to her or whatever. But my, my feeling is I, I don't believe that I have the right to do that. That's God created me. And when God's ready to take me, God will take me. Being a deacon means service. It's a, it's a service ministry, a service, not ministry. It, it, it's actually a service, a life of service. Giving service to your fellow man, giving service to the church, giving service to everyone, giving of yourself. I would say to them, God is in everyone's life. Whether you believe it or not, even a person that doesn't believe in a person that's suffering with cancer or whatever their ails are, God is with them too. God is in, in them as well. They just have to open their hearts and let God come out into their, into their being and he'll help them. But we need God in our lives, everyone. And God is there for everyone. No one should ever feel lonely or alone because God is, God is there for you. If you just take the time and listen, you'll, you'll hear God talking to you. But with God in, in our lives, we'll, we'll succeed in doing what we're intended to do. And, and the only thing I always say to God is, Jesus, I put myself in your hands. Take me where you want to take me, lead me where you want to lead me, and give me the grace to get me where you want me to go. That, that's what I say to God. And I always thank God for, for every moment that I have.